Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. In today's episode I'm going to be doing kind of a troubleshooting episode and figure out why someone threw this motherboard out. And maybe it was something that they didn't know how to fix, they just upgraded, they got a lot of money, threw it away, I don't know. It looks brand new. And I figured well maybe I'll try to test it and see if I can get it to work. This is the MSI AM4 motherboard. It is a 570 chipset. Is the MPG X560 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi motherboard. I looked all over this. I looked up and down, looked for traces or burnt things. I couldn't find anything. And you really need to do a fine tooth comb on a board like this. If someone threw it away or whatever you gotta double check because it could have taken a power hit um something could have been fried and if you put your 100 150 cpu in there it's going to maybe take it out as well uh, when you try to boot this thing up so in order to test this i'm going to be using an older cpu a 3000 series a 3200 ge uh, pro i think it is but it's just an older quad core Ryzen AM4 CPU and it's like 30 bucks and if I toast it it's gonna suck yeah because that's my testing CPU but I'd rather lose that than like a 5700X you know what I'm saying or 5600G and I'm gonna test it with one stick of RAM DDR4 but I will use my Cooler Master V550 modular power supply and test it with the stock um, brackets are left on there why do I want to go ahead and try to get this motherboard to work because it's like going for $400 on Amazon. And if you could do some troubleshooting or maybe the BIOS got screwed up, you know, and maybe you can um, do the flash through the boot and reflash the BIOS or something, maybe you can get it to work. It's one of the top of the line motherboards for the M4, so. Yeah, and it's got USB-C and VR capability, you know, all that stuff and it has the um, gen 4 m2 slots and dual pci express 16 it's, it's full of features i mean just look at the dang thing i'm going to get this system up well components in it and see if we can test it and get it to work and then if it does fingers crossed i'm going to be running some stress tests on it all the ram slots and then I'll stress test it using, using um a various software to really peak the CPU and uh, see if we can get this thing ironed out, run it through its paces. So without further ado, let's get this on test bench and see if it works or not. See if I can fix it if it doesn't. So it's something a little bit different on this channel, but uh, something a lot of people might not know or do. They don't know how to fix something or they don't have the patience or they just got a lot of money and they throw their stuff away. So come on, let's go. AMD Ryzen 3 Pro 3200 GE. I've never used this processor before, so it'd be kind of fun to test it. Supposedly it has graphics on board, so put it in the socket. Maybe they did something to the socket. Maybe they broke a pin. I don't know, but it fits. Nothing obstructing it. Get the cooler on and then go ahead and yeah, we'll just do some stress test benchmarks, stuff like that. I just use the standard AMD Wraith cooler for now and stick a RAM. I don't remember which slot it's supposed to be, so we'll check it out. It'll give me a post or beep maybe if it's the wrong one. And I got a standard, uh, you know, out of the box, out of the case connectors, and I hooked up an OS with a standard SSD on here. And I'm gonna plug it in and uh, use a Cooler Master V550. See if the output from this CPU works and if it doesn't or something's goofed I will put in a PCI Express video card and we will check from there and if not then we'll see if we can flash this BIOS and get it to go from there and I'm gonna hook up the CPU power here and maybe we can get it to run I don't know fingers crossed moment of truth Power's on, 
Everything's plugged in. I put, I put in the eight pin power to the motherboard, but I did not put in another four pin because, well, I don't have that on this board. So let's we'll see if it posts. Otherwise I'll get a beefier power supply. Fingers crossed. All right, the system's running. We have a post, we have a signal out. Looks like it's doing something. Keeps starting and stopping. Got the lights going in a rainbow flashy, flashy pattern. Oh, okay. I got output to the BIOS, I think. Oh, it sees the uh, chip. It sees it. Um, the Ryzen. 3 Pro 3200G with Radeon graphics. Okay, it picked up the, that. It picked up device change memory. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's go to run setup. Okay, well, this is really amazing that this posted. All right. Yeah, it sees my 8 gig stick, DDR RAM. Yep. So what is going on with this motherboard? Oh, I'm gonna have to put in another eight gig stick of RAM, test the slots, and uh, I mean, uh, what is the BIOS? The BIOS is 2021, so I'm going to, it's got the generic SSD that I put on there, and yeah. This is not a speed demon uh, CPU, not even one bit. HCI is on, CSM, audio controller is on, RGB. RGB does work, but I don't want it on because it's annoying. Unless it's in a case you want to show it off, so. Turn on a XMP boost for RAM, etc. So. Yeah, we can uh, update the BIOS once we download it uh, after, but um, I don't know why they threw this away. I don't know. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong. We're going to have to burn this in. So let me go into the M flash mode. Let me get uh, the BIOS. Let's flash the BIOS. We will be right back and flash this thing. Probably break it, but I don't think we will. The BIOS version on here after this, this has an older 2021 BIOS. So the one that actually was on here subsequent, what I'm trying to tell you is that I've looked at this and maybe they had a 5000 series chip that this board so it couldn't support because the uh, BIOSes after the one that's on here actually supported 5000 series. So I don't know what the hell the damn thing is. Uh, all right, so yeah, it's this one right here. No, go back. Uh, uh, it's this one. And yes. So this is the 2024. It's like a couple months old. It's a beta BIOS, and we are upgrading a couple of years worth of BIOSes. Um, yeah, what I was saying before is maybe. The BIOS they had on here didn't support 5,000 chips, or at least not all of them. And maybe they were running a 3,000 series chip or something, Ryzen 3, and they went to upgrade the CPU and they couldn't, and then they didn't understand that, you know, that's something you have to do, upgrade, upgrade the BIOS to support the other CPUs. Of course, you can lose CPU support for older CPUs sometimes if you do that, but maybe this is the case. But this gives you a lot of updates and security and uh, support for newer 5000 series chips. So that's the only thing I think until I stress test this. I don't know. So let's flash this. Hopefully it goes well. Cross the fingers. And then we will get in here and run some uh, rendering benchmarks. All that good stuff. Burn it in. Test. Stress test. Well, here we go. It says 100%. Fingers crossed. Let it boot. Reboot. Maybe we'll go into the BIOS and we'll double check the settings, make sure that that BIOS is updated in there. 
make sure the damn thing posts, you know. Hopefully they didn't remove support for the 3200 series Ryzen chips and uh, yeah, go from there. It's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. It always starts and stops when it's uh... It always worries me when it's applying the new BIOS. Oh, come on! Did I hose it? Nope. Okay. No. All right. There's a new BIOS, 9-2-2024. Hmm. Well, yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to turn on the XMP profile again. Got to juice the memory back up to uh, higher speed. So, let's uh, save this. Exit, put in another stick of RAM in dual channel mode and get it into stress testing. All right, I think we're loading the operating system. I have to load the drivers and uh, get the capture going. So, yeah, not bad. Fingers crossed. So yeah, boosting 3.72 gigahertz, so we're boosting up there, uh, four cores, and yeah, sees a CPU, uh, Ryzen 3 Pro 3200G. So we've got the memory. So I've tested both NVMe slots with a Crucial P3110 drive that's brand new and the results are good. And I've also tested uh, the RAM slots which are good. And I'm now testing the PCI Express slot with a just a modest RX580 uh, new card that I have. In this way, we will see whether or not the system has any problems on any of the PCI Express uh, slots. So, my final thoughts on this MSI MPG Pro Carbon motherboard that I've got for free. I don't really know why it was tossed away. I've tested the PCI Express slots, I've tested the NVMe slots, I've tested the SATA spot slots, I've updated the BIOS, I've went through and checked the RAM slots, I've run tests, I've run uh, Cinebench uh, to see if there is something wrong, faulty or whatever. Now, the only thought that comes to mind is that the BIOS that was on here was an older one from 2021, late 2021. And that could mean that the person had been running a 3000 series, like a 3600, 3200 uh, CPU, a Ryzen CPU, and they went to upgrade to a 5000 series. Well, technically that didn't, that BIOS didn't have a lot of support for the 5000 series. So if they just put a 5700X or something in there, or 5600G, the BIOS, the motherboard's not technically, it might not recognize it at all. So you might get no video out, no, just blank screen. And if the person didn't know that, then they think that, oh, I can't put this in this board. I can't, you know, I won't take it. I don't have to dump the board. So maybe that's what they did. But in reality, you just have to upgrade the BIOS for more CPU support and fixes. And I, that's the only thing I can think of. Or they just figure that they, toss it and buy an AM5 chipset and just threw it away. Didn't want to resell it or deal with it. But kind of boggles my mind because the AMD original brackets that it chipped with, they were still on the motherboard and it was an anti static bag. So I don't know what, it's like it was never used. Whatever the case, it works fine. 
So what will I do with this? I can do a couple things. I can keep it for a backup test system to my B550 motherboard. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. Do I put it in a system and flip it? I mean, it's $249, brand new board. It can go up to 300, still sold online. So I don't know, it's a high-end motherboard. Maybe someone will want it. Maybe I'll put it in a system, flip it, and try to recoup money for the channel and get other stuff to test with it, you know? Maybe that's what I'll do. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey and keep in mind that a lot of things that people throw away or don't want, there's nothing wrong with them. You just have to do some troubleshooting. They're perfectly fine. What's trash to someone else may be just a treasure for you. Today's society kind of stuffs it into your head that you have to get the latest and greatest, the newest, the, up, the uh, most updated. When in reality, why do you? Did it work fine? Were you playing the games you wanted? Were you would be able to edit video, watch YouTube videos, whatever? And if so, then make think about it and say, maybe you don't need to upgrade. Maybe you're getting getting around fine by playing a game at 1080p. Or maybe you just need a video card that can do 1440p. You want to get some more eye candy. Maybe you don't even have a monitor that supports 1440p, so upgrading is not going to do you any good in that regard anyway. So different thoughts on this subject, but it's fine so bonus to me and that just goes to anybody out there if you get somebody something from someone that they don't want or they say it doesn't work test it out maybe there's a simple fix maybe you can repurpose it and use it for yourself maybe you can fix it up and give it to someone in need or something like that don't just throw it in the trash heap there's tons of waste going around and we don't need any more of that. Keep that old stuff in use and keep it out of the landfill. So thanks for watching. Remember this tech.